Anthony, when I come to these FQXI conferences, which I love, this is my fourth, it's your mm -hmm. fifth, uh, I missed one, um, I, I have a fundamental way of, of viewing each of the topics, whether we're talking about time or information or now physics of the observer and what happens, and that is, what are the most fundamental categories of reality? I want to understand, uh, as uh, hopeless as this may be, the totality of reality, all that exists, and, and uh -huh. you know, I know trees exist, benches, you, I, but we're not fundamental, we're built up of other things. If we go down to the most fundamental things and try to just get the categories, and try to get them all, all uh -huh. the categories of things that exist, everybody has a different view, what's yours? <sighs> I think my view might be a little bit to unask the question in, in the sense that, you know, you started out by, by saying that there are these things like trees and, and people that exist, but, but they're not fundamental, like they're somehow less real. And, and I've always believed that kind of as a card-carrying physicist, that, <laughs> that the real stuff is, you know, first it was particles and it was quantum fields, yeah. and maybe it's spin foam networks in quantum <laughs> gravity, who knows, but, but that there's a fundamental reality to that stuff, and this other stuff is kind of convenient approximations and emergent. But but as, as time has gone on, I've kind of come to a slightly different point of view, I think, which is, you know, when I when I ask about what is that tree, you know, a tree is something that is determined by a certain amount of information. What's important about the tree is not what atoms make it up. Mm -hmm. Those are important for its existence in some sense. But what makes it a tree is the arrangement of those atoms. It's the information that's contained in that. And the processing of that information is what makes it grow and photosynthesize and make seeds and all the stuff that a tree does and all the things that makes it a tree. So, so it's an informational entity. And you might say, well, okay, but, but that inf it's information about some actual stuff that's more real, right? The, the stuff is the real thing and the information is just how you happen to arrange that stuff. But, you know, when you look at the stuff, what is the stuff? It's... Uh, if, if you go down, it's chemistry. If you go down farther, it's maybe particles, it's electrons and protons. But there aren't actually electrons and protons. Those aren't real things. What there are are wave functions. There are quantum fields. You know, a, an electron in quantum field theory is an excitation of the quantum field, the electron, the electron field. The electron field is like a wave function. What is a wave function? It's information about something that might happen when you make a measurement. So, you know, you go down the, the spectrum, you think, okay, I'm getting realer and realer and realer, but where you end up is information about something that I'm going to observe. So it's information, kind of all the way down. And so, you know, I've kind of come to this view that we think of the universe sometimes, as physicists, as there's a, the objective universe and there's the subjective universe, and you know, we really want to figure out what the objective one, the, the ultimate one, uh, is. And this other stuff, it'd be nice to know how that emerged out mm -hmm. of it, but it's, you know, details mainly. But I'm not so sure that's the case. You know, I, I'm starting to think that that there is a, a sort of continuum, that there are things that are certainly more subjective. My experiences, my preferences, my aesthetic taste is super subjective. Uh, the fact that we agree that there's a tree there is fairly objective you know other people might give it a different name the fact that there are you know that there's a certain mass to the earth is very objective and that it's made of atoms it's very objective but are they different levels of reality is one of them more real than the other they're all patterns of information and is one pattern of inform you know it's the same stuff it's informational stuff so so i've started to think much more in those terms on the other hand what is information, you know? <laughs> then, then that question comes, and information is generally about something. What is it about? If everything is information, is it information about information about information about information? Uh, so that's about where I've gotten. Uh, so when you have information uh, at the two levels you describe, one is the level of the tree, which information brings together the same kinds of wave function particles, fields, to make what we call a tree as an emergent object. But then information, at least at the lowest level we, we know now, is, 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 is uh, what determines the, the, the wave function and, and how a measurement is made, and the selection is information as well. So you have information in this continuum in the whole, the whole process. So what you're saying is that it, 
if that's so, that information itself is sort of a, a, a category of thinking. Maybe it's mm -hmm. not a category of stuff, but it's a category of organizing stuff or, or, or the substance of stuff. It, it's hard to know because, you know, what quantum mechanics seems to tell us is that there isn't a stuff plus a wave function describing yeah, it necessarily. Yeah. We often think of it that way, but, but then when you ask what is the stuff, nobody can say. You know, what, is, what effect does that stuff have that the wave function doesn't have? Nothing. The wave function it tells is. you everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's, there's no extra reality there, at least in the normal way that people think about quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm. It seems that the information, which is what's embodied in the wave function, is really all that there is. Um, but it's a strange thing, because when you ask what is that information about, it's information about something on a fully at the end of the other end of the spectrum, about me going into a lab and you know measuring one thing or the other. Mm -hmm. When we do a quantum mm -hmm. experiment, it tends to be a macroscopic observer, one of these big emergent things made up of gazillions of particles that are doing the measurement. Mm -hmm. So how can the most fundamental thing be information about what some big complicated mess like us in an experiment <laughs> does? Mm -hmm. It, it's very strangely circular when you kind of you delve all the way down and you end up back here. <laughs> uh, we're talking about the concrete physical world, but mm -hmm. uh, if I uh, if I try to encompass uh, uh, the totality of all that exists, uh -huh. um, I would have to put some other categories. They may be null sets. Sure. They may be sets that have nothing in them, but yeah. they are possibilities, such as non-physical stuff. People put, you know, gods and spirits and mm -hmm. places where parapsychology works or cosmic right. consciousness. A lot of people have a lot of theories. That's what I would call sort of a non-physical uh, set. Again, it could be a null set. Then there are abstract objects. We're talking about the concrete world. There are mm -hmm. mathematics and logic and proposition, all sorts of things that make up th those things. So. You know, so I, I have that in my uh -huh. overview. You may think those are not relevant to a physical way of thinking, and maybe not, but they are to the totality of reality. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I think I do. So, so it's interesting, you know, you brought up mathematics, and there's this kind of classic question, do we discover mathematics right. or do we invent it? And, and I think we do both in the sense that, you know, it, it's just clearly true that if I write down a set of axioms, all the consequences of those axioms sort of exist in the sense that, you know, if I go and look, I will eventually find them. It's, it's hard to imagine that they could have been any different, you know, the results of, of grinding out proofs based on those axioms. So it seems like as soon as I define the axioms, everything that follows from them sort of already exists, right? And so I can only discover mathematical truth, sort of. But at the same time, you know, if I take a set of axioms and get an axi you know, a, a theorem proving computer to just spit out mathematical theorems, it will churn and churn and churn and churn and spit out billions and trillions <laughs> in, in, of mathematical theorems, and that will be incredibly boring. There will be almost nothing of interest there, any more than a monkey typing yeah. on a typewriter, right. right? So what we actually discover is what is the interesting piece of that mathematical structure. You know, that's what mathematicians do is they invent in the same way that when you type, you know, all possible books already exist. You know, once you develop mm -hmm. the typewriter, all possible mm -hmm. books exist in principle. Mm -hmm. But you still have to type one to, to create, to, you know, to write a book. And I think mathematics is the same, that the invention is the selection out of that huge ensemble of possible mathematical systems, the, the ones that are of interest, the ones that we call mathematics. And so in that sense, we've invented it, even though it, it's already out there. So where does, you know, how does that sort of thing exist or not exist? And, and in that sense, I, you know, I sort of bring back information again because we've created information by taking out of that set of all possible mathematical systems this very particular set that we say, that's math, you know, because it's what mathematicians do. And, we, and, it's, and it's useful. We use it for physics. We use it for all kinds of applications. We call that math. That's information, the gap between our selection and the sort of whole ensemble of possibilities, that's information. In the same sense, I think in a lot of ways as, you know, the information is, that's in that tree or, in, or that's in the wave function. So, so I've, I've sort of expanded my view to include that mathematical information in with a lot of the other ones. Um, now where the 
big ensemble of all mathematical things is? Uh, that's, that's another question. But at the, at the root of everything, macroscopic objects like trees, quantum mechanic wa uh, wave function, mathematical truths, you see information as the core unifier of the most fundamental aspects of reality. That, that, Th this week I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh.